Yeah, I'll just plunge yeah, over to my presentation, <coughs> which uh, goes as waste management uh, dire necessities. The world is in a huge dire with uh, multiple challenges concerning the overwhelming discard, which there is always the urgency of uh, immediate addressal. And our perspective must be long term since it is the only way for uh, future justice to the offspring and our nature. No, that is the concern of the day. So the economy had recovered after the pandemic, giving us an opportunity to readdress the paramount heap, which is, as I call, the the waste for sustainable handling. So staggering population hike, acute poverty uh, is really tripping down the capacity building of waste management in the developing nations and also the developed nations. And uh, the raising standards and the lifestyles in the developing stage in, uh, nations together with the poverty of the developing stations, uh, sorry, nations are the cause of tremendous menace of uh, pollutants in the form of waste. So in such a so situation, such a, situation green a green recovery could trim down the greenhouse gases, gases and the temperature and rise, rise below 2 degrees Celsius. Celsius. So the sustainable, so the sustainable development, development goals 2030, 2030 aim, is aim is to achieve this goal through reduction, through reduction reuse, reuse and the recovery, and the recovery although, although rejection is the primary choice. Primary choice. So the so the good news here is we have an opportunity to do better for the humanity through these 17 sustainable developmental goals. So management hierarchy, which is a source reduction, uh, here you know the source re reduction and reuse, followed by down the recycling and composting and the energy recovery and ultimately the treatment and disposal. As you can see the uh, inverted triangle showcases the same and, uh, you, and uh, you know today the waste, today the waste is the economy, is the economy. so the so Contemptuous discard has now gained economic value and uh, paved way for new spawning businesses, uh, business opportunities, let me put it that way, to effectively manage waste and uh, provide cleaner living environments. So to walk down sustainable countries uh, have taken the um, uh, uh, circular economy pathway to e efficiently tackle this problem which to an extent would uh, safeguard the environment and the health of the people. So presently uh, as you are aware there is an uh, exponential growth in the quantity of waste generated globally. We have been experiencing a tremendous uh, inclusion of technology and comforts in the lifestyle of man for uh, addressing these comfort needs. This has risen the, uh, you know, risen the production of components industrially um, for easy accessories mainly in urban areas which confront the waste heaps. So in addition, it also um, elevated the discharges of loads of uh, pollutants into the environment. So by 2030, the global pollution uh, population uh, would be approximately 8.5 billion and the waste generated would be approximately 2.59 billion tons and by 2050, it will be hiking up to 3.4 billion tons. So this byproduct of uh, human activities is estimated to triple in developing countries where there are low income levels but the fact show should not be ignored that um, developed countries which account only for 16 percent of the global population is generating one third uh, which is like around 34 percent of the waste generated by the total world. So according to a study by Arbella on global e-waste statistics, uh, you can see in the graph, uh, the 57.4 metric tons of e-waste was generated in 2021 and the total is uh, growing to an average of 2 metric tons a year. There is over uh, 347 metric tons, million metric tons, uh, sorry, I uh, make the correction, million metric tons of uh, unrecycled e-waste on Earth uh, is in 2023. So China, the US and India produce the most e-waste. Only 17.4% of e-waste is known to be uh, collected and uh, properly recycled. 
only 78 countries have any form of legislation of dealing with this e-waste so in india a date from ministry of environment forest and climate change shows only 32.9 percent of e-waste generation in 2021 and 22 uh, which, is uh, which is recycling while the figures, while have, the figures grown have grown up the uh, for the past years it, it indicates that a staggering 67 percent of e-waste uh, remained unprocessed so of uh, 159 million tons of plastics which can be used only for a short time uh, to be produced globally in 2023 is 43 percent that is 68.5 million tons with end up in causing pollution so just an uh, uh, overall insight uh, uh, into a quick insight into the sources of uh, this contamination due to the solid waste uh, with respect uh, to uh, how it is being uh, mismanaged. Uh, the situation is due to the mishandling of the varied waste. So the different sources like uh, municipal construction and demolition waste, electrical, electronic, plastic, um, hazardous batteries, paints, biomedical, chemical waste, etc. These all need to be handled properly and sustainably. Unfortunately, many wastes are uh, destined either in improper incineration or landfill, which is not sanitary, leading to the explosion of uh, damaging pollutants, disrupting the food chain. Uh, thereby, the ecosystems create a threat to their sustenance. As a result of improper disposal, the impact are very nauseous uh, to the health of man and environment. So the open dumping and uh, leaky landfills are a menace contributing to the greenhouse gases and they are also uh, contributors of disease vectors, water and soil pollution and also a threat to the biodiversity. So by 2025 approximately 10% of greenhouse gas emissions like methane and carbon dioxide are emitted by landfills uh, which cause uh, climate change and an increase in the planet's temperature. So landfill sites, uh, sites which are currently uh, containing approximately 40% of world's waste. Here we can see uh, one of our oldest uh, economic activities, uh, the scavenging rag pickers from the waste stream is an important economic activity that uh, provides an income to over 15 million people worldwide and has a financial impact of uh, several billion USD every year. So 1% of the urban population is uh, in developing countries uh, are making uh, livelihood from scavenging. So uh, slowly going into the technology part where you know we contradict with the technological growth here the, exp the exponential growth uh, in the quantity of waste generated globally due to the enhanced lifestyles commercial and industrial developments and health concerns this tremendous increase in uh, solid waste is uh, imposing serious challenges for the concerned authorities in addressing this waste as the affordability is shooting high the consumables for comfort are also elevating with uh, invariably um, uh, increasing the production and complexities uh, which imply uh, uh, to the development of the country so economic rise is due to the consumption which is proportional to the technological development as industry technologies are advancing in the production of uh, products and materials the waste generated is also carrying complexities which is the main concern to address since the absence of processes or technologies in main, uh, maintaining or managing or handling such uh, waste the municipalities or the authorities are deficient in adequate systems not only to address the quantities but also due to the complexities of the wastes so a statistics uh, states uh, uh, that in order to increase to a million dollar economy, six million tons of uh, municipal solid waste will be generated annually. In the 20th century developments, the GDP has increased 23 times, the mineral extraction has raised by 27 times and fossil fuel consumption by 12 times. 
India is also in the race towards uh, this trillion uh, dollar economy, but India's annual waste generation is 60 million tons. Just imagine, India is set to generate 165 million tons of waste by 2030 and 436 million tons by 2050. As a result, the annual greenhouse gas emissions uh, from the municipal solid waste are expected to go up to 41.09 million tons by 2030. Just imagine how to address such a hell a lot of pollution. So the need of the art is therefore a developmental model based on the circular economy approach that looks at uh, sustainable waste management and optimum utilization of resources which is the key to an Atmanirbhar Bharat. So, the suggested leap uh, is from the take, make and dispose linear economy to the more efficient circular economy which is aimed at uh, eliminating waste and the uh, con uh, continual use of resources. So, circular systems here engage, uh, they reuse, uh, share, they repair and remanufacture, recycle and in composting to create a closed loop system. So it is primarily based on two cycles. One is technological and another is biological. So non-biological processes or non-degradable, biodegradable processes are uh, products are involved in the technological cycle, like uh, you know plastics, metals, etc. And in biodegradable materials or the biodegradable cycle. Uh, the food, timber, etc. are included. So this degradable feedback, uh, the waste materials into the natural system, resulting in regeneration of the resources, which in turn result in value-added products. Now here is the major concern, the value-added products. So materials from the technological cycle especially can be recovered, like, you know, when we use mobiles, laptops, etc. Uh, help in restoring or reusing at least some parts, you know, essence to remake uh, again involve, there is a question here, you know, remaking also involves money, resource uh, and also industry, but say in reassembling, for example, a car, it takes 80% less energy and 80% less material than a newly manufactured car. So this is a solution. Such habits are in our culture, you know, uh, the age-old cultures, you know, using, repairing, using it again and again, having that sentimental uh, link with the objects, what you are used to. But this was ruled out uh, in this technological run, saying outdated or not updated. Uh, ironically, now the same slogan is heard loud, uh, social, environmental and economic are the, three are the three dimensions as you can see uh, towards your uh, corner of the slide that it says about the dimensions of sustainability often referred to as people planet and profit so the circularity eliminates waste and use it as a resource which which is paving way for new techno uh, technologies in new business opportunities or entrepreneurships thus minimizing the resource exploitation and waste menace and ultimately re reducing which leads to the reduction of the um, carbon emissions therefore circular economy confronts climate change and other global Challenges, challenges like biodiversity loss, and, uh, waste and uh, pollution, pollution by decoupling, by decoupling economic, activity economic activity from the, from the consumption of finite resources. Of finite resources. So, the other important, so the other important consideration, consideration to achieve sustainability, to achieve sustainability is designing, designing the products and processes futuristic with futuristic views of their fate. Of their fate. So, if the so if the green idea is implemented right at the, right at the production, production handling, the respective, the respective discard, discard can be managed sustainably. sustainably. The the blended or complex uh, multi-layered plastics used in packing snacks, as you know, are very dangerous. Even when incinerated, those plastics emit a lot of uh, secondary products, which are very harmful. And uh, may you can uh, another example is the garments from the textile industry, like you know, poly cotton, velvet, satin, linen, denim, etc. The complexities in making such 
um, um, uh, products, you know, li- uh, which are um, we, they leave a very meager chance of uh, or a choice in recycling. Um, those products you know so likewise the batteries and the list goes on so the process engineering plus the human engineering should emphasize on the fate of the product which will decrease the stress of managing them earlier uh, roads were levied um, using this uh, plastic uh, waste uh, in uh, Chennai Highway if I'm not wrong you know and then later they found that the microplastics were evolving because of the friction of the tires against the road but now we come to know that even nano part nano micro plastics are being emitted um, uh, from from the plastics which are reused so the impact uh, is shown very lately so the research orientation must be from you know cradle to grave and the collaboration of the industry uh, in the green perspective would would rather, rather uh, result in a sustainable products so uh, very unfortunately you know we were working on a lot of uh, uh, research areas but um, i haven't showcased any very unfortunately uh, the waste has entered into our food chains and the ecosystems uh, disrupting their functions now here you can see that uh, um, uh, and a lot of research has been done um, how the microplastics have entered into the food chain through milk through fish and you know even in the packing material so it is high time to combat uh, and treat this about 5.5 million tons of plastic waste gets reprocessed recycled yearly in india which is 60% of the total plastic waste in the country where only 70% of the waste is reprocessed um, in registered facilities and 20% by the informal sectors and the rest 10% is uh, recycled at the household level it was uh, a study by csc in 2020 so these microplastics are regarded as a global issue due to their toxicity effects on the fish uh, any animal or biodiversity and on humans also a con- a contamination of microplastics um, in fish uh, was a major hazard that uh, required a special focus um, after exposure to the microplastics um the the fish uh, after getting polluted it experiences a various health issues and many reports have stated this so microplastics can cause tissue damage it, uh, oxidative stress and um, changes in immune related gene expression as well as uh, oxidant status in the fish Now, after being exposed to microplastics fish suffers uh, uh, from, neuro- from neurotoxicity uh, uh, growth retardation and, uh, and uh, behavior abnormalities the consequence, the consequence of microplastic of microplastic human health are uh, poorly understood uh, but, in 2020, uh, but in 2020 our research reported that uh, poly uh, propylene infant feeding, infant feeding bottles uh, with, contemporary uh, with contemporary preparation procedures were found to cause microplastics exposure in infants ranging from 14,600 to 45,000, uh, 45 lakhs, 50,000 particles per day in 48 regions. So we really need to bother. These are only uh, uh, one or two examples, but uh, many case studies have found that uh, these microplastics are into the food chain which unfortunately entered into the ecosystems and is a major concern to be bothered about in a near future and also right right away although uh, marked um, uh, deformities or effects are not known in a human but the studies are at the peak so according to a report by the um, energy resource uh, 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 energy and resource uh, institute that is terry india generates uh, over 62 million tons of uh, met- um, million uh, metric tons of waste in a year only 43 percent of which um, gets collected and only um, 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 uh, how would i say and only a minimal is uh, disposed appropriately but uh, but uh, you know 
you know, uh, in addressing these uh, uh, wastes, uh, many technologies have been invented, and uh, nowadays. Uh, the wealth uh, waste to energy and waste to wealth is the slogan of the art and when we just look at some of the possibilities of wealth to energy technologies by converting this municipal solid waste into energy we can see that uh, uh, incineration uh, pyrolysis gasification and the refuse uh, derived fuels are uh, used prominently so this from this municipal solid waste thermal uh, the first uh, it is uh, initially i can uh, point out this the um, uh, thermal uh, um, energy uh, biological and, uh, and and again uh, the ultimately it ends up into the landfill from where the energy is derived through the landfills and um, uh, we get the biogas um, and uh, through the um, biological processes under anaerobic conditions uh, we get bi we can harvest biogas and by the proper composting we get a manure to the um, um, crops and all so um, this rdf uh, which is the refuse derived fuels uh, um, gains uh, popularity nowadays because uh, these uh, are uh, from the sludges these can be made uh, even from the sludges but here now the from the solid waste the rdfs are uh, uh, prepared uh, we, have, uh, we may have uh, uh, application as a sellable uh, uh, fuel product in addition to uh, being a uh, 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 waste to energy, energy feedstock. Feed Such material uh, uh, is used to fire uh, cement cleans or industrial boilers, boilers and, and may generate, generate carbon offset credits. So, uh, so uh, existing, existing sanitary landfills have a life period, life period of 25 to 30 years. 30 years. So, so now they have started biomining bio these landfills uh, to uh, um, which, uh, excavate, which uh, excavate these landfills, uh, these to, landfills harvest to harvest energy. Um, roughly, uh, the, soil the soil from them will have 35 percent of humus, 5 percent of uh, recyclables, uh, uh, roughly approximately 4 percent of textile waste, and 16 uh, percent of plastics, and 40 percent of inerts, uh, which uh, will be recovered and which are used in building roads, uh, dividers. Uh, pavement blocks manhole covers bricks etc so uh, this uh, waste to wealth and uh, wealth to waste as you can see there are a number of options where people are and and using in uh, creating all these wastes <coughs> Like you can see, the already, the already used, products used products have been used, and, used and uh, biologically, uh, the methane production is uh, uh, through, the anaerobic through the anaerobic codigestion. Methane, methane production is there, and the biomethane which is recovered from, from the landfills are also towards sustainable, sustainable using. And, uh, and uh, lastly, <coughs> one second. <coughs> So upcycling also, you know, known as uh, creative users is the process of changing waste materials into byproducts and undesirable items into new materials or products for higher quality and environmental values. So you can see a number of options like, you know, smart bins, uh, LOT integrated smart bins. And as I said, the sludges uh, from the industries are uh, in Africa. Uh, they have been uh, practically using this uh, 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 sludges and converting into charcoal and using for various uh, purposes. And uh, similarly, you know, I have a uh, a, suggestion a suggestion or a question for the researchers where you know innovations like the reusable packing material with the dissolvable labels would actually um, cut down the making of the cardboard cardboard materials uh, for the logistic chain which are at peak now um, taking all the online uh, shopping and all considering all the stuff you know it has a lot of carbon footprint so this can be reused and uh, uh, recycled so concluding my presentation, my presentation it's irony that, irony that age, old habits, age old habits are uh, you know like uh, bottled uh, milk, milk and uh, bags, carrying bags, bags, bags carrying bags and fetching veggies in boxes etc were ruled out and but the trend, the trend of easy picking, easy picking and uh, pick and go is all in the, all in the um, hurry burry lifestyle, lifestyle. But, 
but is that, is that was uh, the choice of the choice everybody, everybody that easy choice, easy you, choice go you know choice. easy go choice but, but today we are today we are really paying a very high cost for that easy, for that going, easy going lifestyle so at least so now, at least every, now individual every individual needs to realize, needs to realize and, and act accordingly to address the future turmoil, the future turmoil taking their first steps towards sustainability and, uh, with, and uh, with this i conclude my speech thank you for your patient hearing and